Hi, I'm Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at using the TI Inspire to visualize velocity vectors for parametric equations in the plane. Here's the setup. We're defining uh, position functions that describe an ellipse parametrically. X pose and Y pose are the positions, 4 cosine t for x, 3 sine t for y. And below we've taken the derivatives of these position functions and those are giving us the components of the velocity. So that's x v e l and y v e l. Now on this next page I've just gone through and defined for a particular time t equal a the current position x a y a for a particle its current velocity and by adding the velocity components to the position components can create xbyb which will be the head of a vector with a tail at the current position. It's a way of drawing the velocity vector as we move around a curve. And I've set a equal to zero to start with which is, will be our starting time. So you can see that I've linked the velocity components to this displayed velocity vector. And here are our current positions. And that xbyb is what's defining that arrowhead. The slider at the lower left is for advancing time t equal a. Now to illustrate, I'm going to actually turn on the geometry trace, select our current position point, and then I'm going to drive time forward, and we can see it tracing out the positions. And notice that the velocity vector is hooked onto the moving particle showing us the direction that it will be moving. And so this is a very nice way to visualize the meaning of a velocity vector. So I continue to move along this path that's in the shape of an ellipse and I'm coming up to a point where I'm going to pause. Here we go. Now the velocity vector here at this particular point is 3.33 x component, 1.66 for the y component. If I increment time by a small amount, those are the approximate multipliers that I would give me the increments in x and y. So my x component should increase by about 0.33 and my y component should increase by about 0.16 approximately. Let's try that out and actually increment by 0.1 and you can see that it was pretty close. So the velocity vector has both a direction and a magnitude. The direction is telling us the instantaneous direction that the particle's moving and the length of the vector tells us the speed at which it's moving. Now I'm going to erase that geometry trace and draw the path actually using the regular parametric plotter. So we've just entered those position functions into the regular parametric plotter and there's our plotted ellipse. This velocity vector tracer, if you will, is one we can still use on a plotted function as long as we've entered the corresponding position functions for our x1 and y1. You can see how this velocity vector document works. Let's apply it to one of the questions from the BC exam 2018. In question 2, part D, rather than the position functions, the derivatives of those components are given. So we can work backwards. I've got the velocity given explicitly, and he's, these are the functions that were given in the problem. And by anti-differentiating, we can recover the position function. Now we weren't given an initial position, so I'll just assume that we'll call the initial position the origin. So I've set up these two integral functions that will give me the position of the particle at each time t. All right, now I've set up a graph page similar to the one that we had before. Um, and we've defined all of our components for our velocity vector in the same way. But let's see if it works. Okay. So there's our position functions. We've plotted them, and this is the path of that boat 
for the time interval from 0 to 1. And we can trace using our time tracer. And you can see the, uh, the velocity vector is actually changing in length. So that's corresponding to a varying speed as well as direction. And so we're moving along this path. Okay. A couple of distinctions to make here is the actual length of that path would be the total distance traveled by the boat over that time interval while the difference between the initial and ending positions would be what we would call the displacement. Well, that concludes this video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.